Last. This will be the last uh, presentation, and then we really go to the uh, older population, centenarians above 100 years, and uh, the presenter uh, again uh, will be Dr. Manuel Martinez Celes from the University Hospital Gregorio Maranon in Spain and uh, the title is Centenarians and Their Heart, a prospective registry with comprehensive geriatric assessment, ECG, echocardiography, and follow-up. Please, Dr. martinez -Selles. In the next minutes, I will speak about centenarians and about centenarians' heart. Uh, my name is martinez -Selles. Uh, I have no conflict of interest. Uh, why is it so important to study centenarians? because as we all know, they are an exceptional aging paradigm, and so they can provide valuable information on achieving longevity. Moreover, centenarians have increased in recent years, and nowadays it is common practice to see them in hospitals. However, we have very few data regarding the cardiac anatomy, the cardiac physiology, and pathophysiology. <laughs> I'm going to present the data from the 4C registry. The 4C stands for Cardiac and Clinical Characterization of Centenarians. This is a prospective registry. It was performed in nine hospitals in Spain, and we studied 118 centenarians <coughs> during a two-year period. As you can see, mean age is very high, as could be expected. We even had one centenarian with 110 years. And uh, the only exclusion criteria was that uh, the centenarian couldn't be uh, admitted in the hospital. Although we permitted inclusion the day of hospital discharge. So in fact, 62% of them were assessed at hospital discharge. Re regarding where the centenarians were living. As you can see, most of them, three quarters of them, were living at home. I think that in Spain, we still like to have grandparents at home, and this data shows that. Uh, regarding the main clinical characteristics, uh, more or less half of them uh, had uh, five or more schooling years. And it was very surprising for us because we asked all of them to subjectively evaluate their uh, health status from one till 10. And uh, uh, as you can see, 45% uh, gave themselves a score of eight or above eight. So they consider their health status to be good or very good. 31% uh, of them had a good nutritional status, 28% had no cognitive impairment, and it was also, uh, I think, uh, very surprising that uh, almost uh, two-thirds of them had a first-degree relative uh, uh, that lived over 90 years. So I think this is uh, telling us about uh, the importance of genetics in, uh, in these persons. Only 11% remain completely independent, and uh, most of them, in fact, were unable to work six meters. We measure dependency with the CATS index, and uh, as you can see, 42% uh, had minor or no dependency. Moderate dependency was seen in 21%, but 30, uh, sorry, 37% had severe or total dependency. Uh, this is the first studies to uh, um, evaluate the electrocardiography and echocardiography of uh, centenarians. And uh, uh, as you can see, we found that most centenarians had uh, ECG alterations. This was almost universal in men and was also a frequent finding in women. And abnormalities in echocardiography were found in almost all the centenarians. Uh, over one-fifth presented atrial fibrillation. This was the most frequent arrhythmia that we found. And uh, over two-thirds of the centenarians presented diastolic dysfunction. 
left ventricular dilation was present in 14%, and uh, it's important that we found that left ventricular dilation was associated with the ability to walk six meters. And uh, regarding valve uh, uh, disease, aortic regurgitation was found in almost half of the centenarians, and the presence of aortic regurgitation was associated with mortality. Uh, we conclude that most uh, centenarians have uh, ECG alterations, that abnormalities in echocardiography are uh, almost universal. Some abnormalities in echocardiography uh, were associated with the ability to walk and with mortality, and we think this is very important. So our data uh, show that there exists an age-related effect on the heart and that uh, this influences not only functional status but also the prognosis of centenarians. And so we think that this uh, effect could be taken into account in the development of possible strategies to prevent or mitigate it. I thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's one of the first uh, presentations looking into those very old people. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, please. Yeah, Ed Sussman with MedPage today. Um, you say um, most centen centenarians have ECG um, ab um, alterations. Um, do you have any precise numbers on that? Yes. Uh, in men, uh, um, the, I don't have the exact figure, but it's like 91% of men presented ECG abnormalities, uh, while in women it was 64%. And of the 118 um, individuals that you um, studied, um, what was the breakdown by sex? Yes, uh, about... Uh, 75% were women. In this age range, we have much more women than men. This, this is the reason for this uh, high rate of women. And um, how many of them um, were, did, uh, do you have a number of uh, men, or overall population that had um, mild uh, cognitive impairment or worse? Could you repeat the question, please? Uh, what's the percentage of patient of, of this group that was uh, um, had cognitive impairment, or yes, you, uh, it, uh, I, I've shown that data. Uh, it was high. Uh, we can see that uh, regarding cognitive oh, okay. impairment, yeah. only twenty-eight percent had no cognitive impairment. 28% so, had no cognitive That's correct. 72 presented some degree of cognitive impairment. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes, there's a question from the audience there. Can you give us a, a, a sense, just in your mind, uh, other than this data, what what else you learned from, uh, yes. uh, I guess, uh, a take-home message for, for, for doctors and patients? Yes, of course. Well, the first surprising data was that left ventricular ejection fraction was high. It was about uh, 60%. And uh, so one hypothesis is that this perhaps these centenarians have a strong heart, and so they were able to reach that high age, uh, thanks to that. Also, we did questions regarding their um, consumption habits, uh, physical activity, and so on. And it, it was, they, most of them have an extreme, extremely uh, um, uh, physical, acti frequent fr physical activity. Uh, tobacco and alcohol consumption were very, very low. Uh, most of them uh, kept doing exercise after 65 years of age. So they were a very healthy group. Probably that also was the reason why they got to that age. Uh, 
Will you present that data in a formal presentation, or, or do, you, do you have that data? Yes, on the, this data it has been presented yesterday, and it's, it has been submitted to the medical journal. And my final question is, what is your sense of the fact that eight out of, or that the majority gave themselves eight out of 10? That's pretty yes. high. Yes, that was surprising. In my hospital, we included 18 centenarians. And I remember a lady, she came in a wheelchair and she was perfectly from the cognitive point of view, but had a severe physical impairment, and we asked her, how, how do you consider your health? And she said, nine. For no, and, and we thought she didn't understand the question, so I told her, no, but nine is very good health. Perhaps you, want, you mean one or two, no, no. She said, no, I think my, I, I, I can be with my uh, children, my grandchildren, I, I'm happy. So it, it, it was surprising, but that's what we found. Maybe uh, not causation, maybe an association. <laughs> uh, well, there's some questions out there. Yes, please, the gentleman, yeah. Uh, do you have also information on the cause of death of these centenarians? Is yes. it more cardiac or is uh, cancer? We have some information. However, the cause of death was determined by telephone call to uh, relatives. So in some cases, it was not easy. So we have some information. Uh, we mm, have about half of the deaths were unexpected. I wouldn't say sudden death because we don't have like the medical records, but uh, half of the deaths were unexpected while the other half were after uh, hospital admission, in some cases due to infection or other disease. There was a question uh, late in oh. the first bench. No? It's just hypothesis generating, and I know you can't glean this from the data, but it seems that our hoses wear out before our myocardium does because we have AI. Do you have any thoughts along those lines about prevention <clears throat> measures or therapy or anything like that that was so strongly correlated with mortality? Yes. Uh, I think uh, probably we should start... Uh, uh, increasing prevention measures in elderly people because right now I think we are uh, just trying to detect uh, cardiovascular disease early in younger patients so that we can implement uh, preventive st strategies. But my point of view is that we should uh, increase the efforts in the detection of cardiovascular disease in the elderly so that we can prevent uh, uh, this uh, the appearance of cardiovascular disease. So um, I don't know if uh, that will have a higher impact in uh, elderly or in younger patients, but what uh, I'm positive is the higher is your age, uh, the higher rate of deaths are due to cardiovascular disease. Well, thank you very much. I think we are on time. Uh, I think we have